Um, no, I don't need that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, in regards to my life, um, it's been a whirlwind and it's still going on. Um, microphone. Is there any way it can be adjusted a little? Okay, just right here. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> when I stopped to think, when I was listening to some of the things that she was saying um, in regards to the accomplishments, I am humbled because to me, it's, I'm just me, you know. I, I didn't set out to accomplish those things. I just, my, my purpose was just to take care of my brother's kids. Um, when he passed away, um, I was an, a corporate executive, just doing my thing, living my life, being a single person, and he um, was hit by an underage driver on Manchester, and um, they were in foster care, and I knew they needed to be taken care of, and I stepped up and took care of them. And I was blessed of it because of that. And strangely enough, this thing about how we think with our minds, it is so important. I've been like that since I was a little girl. I've always been one of those thinkers that, you know, hmm, let me see if I put something out there in the universe, how will it come back to me? And it's always been an amazing journey. I'm still on that journey. Um, I'm about to cry, so please stop. <laughs> Give me a moment. Um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. It is. It truly is. My, my manifesting the lottery, let's start with that. I do a lot of reading when it comes to the mind, because I believe that our minds are very powerful. As you think, so it is. Thank you so much. I strive to think positive at all times, even when things don't seem so positive. I switch my thoughts. Have to, we have to in life. <laughs> because if you don't, those thoughts that are bugging you will have a way of manifesting in your life. Amen. Amen. And so, it's always great to have people around you, to have books, even the things you watch on television. I don't watch negative TV. I, I only watch news when I feel it's pertinent because those things that you put in your, on your mind have a way of showing up. When I won the lottery on Mother's Day, yeah, it was great, but it came with a lot of pain, too. I won it, but I had also lost those kids shortly before then. Those kids were taken from me on April 3rd. I'll never forget that day, never forget it. Dealing with social services. I was dealing with the system with a woman who told me that I was not a great mom because these kids weren't they, weren't, they weren't going to school the way they were supposed to. They were afraid. They were afraid because of being in the system, going through what they were going through. But she said, your kids are too happy. They don't need to be on medication. They don't need this, they don't need that. Okay. So I got my kids taken from me on April 3rd. She said, they don't need medication. All right. I said my prayers. 
I chose not to curse the woman. Actually, I did curse. <laughs> Let me be real. I was upset. And then I remembered that I wasn't going to be blessed. So I chose to forgive. I also chose to forgive my sister, who I thought was odd that she chose to show up on that same day from Vegas and laughed at me as she saw me in my pain. And I forgave her, too. And on Mother's Day, yeah, I want it. And I, I didn't, God just provided it for me. It wasn't because I wanted to win the money so I could be wealthy. I wanted the money so I can get a good attorney to fight the system. That's what it was for. And I was blessed because of it. And one thing that I always remembered from my reading, some of my favorite books besides the Bible, because the Bible is the oldest living spiritual testament on the power of the mind. As you think, so shall it be. And also, Power of the Subconscious Mind is one of my favorite books. What I remembered was, hmm, I have to be positive, have to stay in that mindset. So, been blessing me, <laughs> continually blessing me as a result of that. But I did get my kids back in the time that I said I was going to get them back. It's another thing. You, gotta, you have to be really clear when you say that you're going to do what you plan to do. When I won the money, yeah, I did intend to win $112 million, too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Um, everything, I, I, what I've realized too in life is it comes to you when you say and when you need it. And sometimes it just comes serendipitous, and like a serendipitous, uh, I'm trying to say the word correctly, when it's supposed to. It comes. God always knows when we need things. And we just have to trust. We just have to let go. You know the saying, let go, let God? It's, it's almost like you're floating in, on water. You just have to have that trust. And that's something that is so hard for us as humans to just trust. Trusting in something that we cannot see. Just like we're breathing air. We can't see the air, but we're breathing it. That's what I had to do on my faith walk when it came to winning this lottery to help me to get to where I am today. I've been able to bless many people as a result of it, and I've grown from it. I've grown to learn that regardless of what I'm going through, he's always going to be there. And I'm not perfect. There are times when I still get down. And then I, something whispers in my ear, that's not how you're supposed to think. And I'm glad that that happens. So it reminds me, stand up and be strong. Because you need to be there and pull others to help them remember. So my lesson in terms of manifesting, I visualize. I see it. I first see what it is that I want. I see it first. Because <laughs> as you see it, so shall it be. We're blessed if we are able to have sight. See, these kids' dad, my brother, was deaf. He couldn't hear. So I knew sign language. 
And I used to always think that is, a, I'm blessed that I'm able to hear. The things that we take for granted, I don't take for granted. So visualizing, I visualize all the time. And as you visualize, I visualize all the time that I was going to be holding a check for $112 million written across it. I even visualize myself wearing my little favorite green top, which I don't know where in the heck it is now. It served its purpose. <laughs> I wore it out, that's what happened. Um, and I remember thinking, I'm going to wear that top, I'm going to hold that check, and I'm going to be so happy. Because that what you put your strongest feeling into has to manifest. It has to. Good or bad. So why not manifest your best? And that's what I strive to do all the time. And oddly enough, it's written in the Bible. These are things that I started realizing as I, I'm 50, I'll be 52 in a few months, that, wow, this is stuff my mom had been teaching me for years. All I had to do was look and see it. It would have changed things in my life. But I know it now. Whatever it is you want, the sooner that you understand that Mm, I may not have much right now. That don't mean anything because I'm wealthy. The moment you start saying to yourself, I am wealthy, wealth comes to you. Wealth is an energy. Just like poverty is an energy. When you say you're poor, it will circulate in your life. When you say you're wealthy, that's what I did. I just started saying I'm wealthy. I started singing it. I'm wealthy. <laughs> I say I'm happy. In fact, Pharrell, the happy song, yes. that's my song. Yes. Yes. That was a song that I was singing to myself because I t tend to, well, I'm going through certain things and there are people who don't like the things I say universally, so they want to attack me. And I would sing this, I'm happy, and my husband heard it on the radio one day, because he would hear me sing that song, and he's like, hun, uh, your song is on the radio. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, okay. So be careful, because depending on how powerful your spirit is, you can go out, the world can hear it and come back. But be positive, is my point. Strive to be positive because what you put out will come back. Amen. Always. Even when you put out negative, it'll come back. So I, I always strive to be in the positive. And by the way, the social worker who said all these negative things apologized because she realized she was wrong. Because I forgave her. The Bible says to forgive your enemies, to love them. You don't have to like them. But you do have to forgive if you expect to receive your blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Yep. And yes, it, 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 it took a lot for me to do that too. So visualize, always speak things into the positive with positive energy and you have to feel it strongly. And be your best, what do I call it, cheerleader. Like, just cheer yourself on. See yourself as, like, the best on this planet. And don't hang around and have people around you that want to pull you down. Okay? Because they will do that. They will be there. And you just have to look at them and say, okay, they're not at the same level that I'm on, and God bless you. In fact, say prayers for them. and keep moving on. Sometimes you might have to let them go and release them. Release them, let them go, and keep moving. Have a smile on your face. 
sing that McDonald's song, put a smile on and keep it moving. But that's what I do. I don't allow the negative around me. And I'm constantly being blessed. I wake up every day and I say, today is a good day. And it is. I say, today is a great day and I have great days. I'm constantly, constantly saying that I'm blessed. Because I don't know if you guys believe in heaven. Well, I'm sure you do. Um, I know that there is, you know, God, I call him Jehovah, Jah, his son, Jesus. There's Satan. He's out there to make us think that we are not powerful and we can't have the things that we want. And I'm a testimony that we can. We're not here to just be less than. We're here to be powerful and to be the best. As we live and breathe, every breath I take, I'm saying that I'm powerful. I say that I'm healthy. Because as you say it, so shall it be. That's what I say all the time. And God can only be in your life when you allow him to be in your life. And you will be tested. That's part of life. But the test starts to get a little less once you realize your power. It is a great, it's great to, realize, to, to understand the power of the mind and how powerful the mind can be when you are in this, in this space of manifesting your will. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, you think? <laughs> Am I going to be careful? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. When I was living in Hawthorne, this is something I found was interesting. Um, I can remember <laughs> looking for a house, and my real estate agent was just kind of, I told her I wanted a house, foreclosed house in a particular part of Hawthorne that all the houses are going for about 500000 I said, well, I only want a house for about 150000 I needed this particular square foot. Um, and she's like, oh, I'm not going to be able to find it. I said, yes, you will. She said, well, I'll see. I said, you'll find it. You'll find it in a few weeks. I'm kind of intuitive, too. And so <laughs> I didn't tell her that. And so um, within a few weeks, she found the house. And she was scared to call me, but she called me and told me she found the house. And Oddly enough, in that house, oh, thank you. <laughs> the house had a book in there, because the man who, I, well, the man had passed away, was an older gentleman that lived there. So there were some things left over in that house. And one of the books that I found in the garage was, had something to do with the dynamic power of your mind, of your subconscious mind or something like that. And I thought, huh, this is interesting. I'm always constantly being reminded of the power of my mind. And yes, I did get the house at the price I wanted, which was nice. <laughs> what you say is what you will receive. And I'm always telling my friends, you know, uh, if you say you want something for free, be that. You know, don't put it out there that, you know, um, I'm gonna you know, do this at this particular time when you really want it now. If you want something right now, say you want it now. Don't put it off into the future. Because the mind hears you. And the subconscious mind doesn't take 
jokes. Don't joke with yourself. Don't say, oh, I'm so stupid, because all of a sudden you start being stupid. I, just, I say to myself, I'm the most brilliant person on the planet. Mm -hmm. Because what you say up here is what your mind believes. Yes. So we have to be careful of what we say. If you're in the entertainment business and you want to be, you have to be that person who say, I'm the next star, whatever. Because if you don't, and you listen to other people telling you that you're not someone important, and I think everyone is important. We all have a role. You just have to choose what you want to be. And you have to choose, though. You have to make the choice. No one else can make the choice for you. Because the mind will open those doors for you. And so will spirit. Our minds are so powerful. That's how God created us. You say, I'm just saying, well, you know, what do you think if you don't have to do that? I said, I, my, quit playing with me, you know? My dad loves playing. And he's like, oh, okay. He said, what, 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 what if you have all the money you need? I'm like, I'm just waiting for him to tell me, okay? And he did, finally. And I felt the relief. But yeah, you know, it, 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 was, it was just such a great feeling, but this is something that I already kind of knew, but just going through it, the, the hows of it. And that's another thing too. When you want to manifest something, don't ask how. Just put it out there. Don't ask how it's going to happen. Like for me, I just, I had several ways of bringing wealth in. That just happened to be one of them. But I had other ways of bringing money into my life. Did I answer your question? Okay. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, so I have a question. With all of this newfound freedom and wealth, is it easy deciding what to do with it? Uh, at first it wasn't. I was like a kid in a candy store after I got them. Um, when you do manifest the wealth that you want, what I say to people, especially when I do interviews, is um, be prepared. In fact, what I started doing before the money came um, was talking to financial advisors. Um, get in good with wealth, which means study wealth. Study wealthy people. And um, because wealth will stay around you when you say you're wealthy. Um, talk to lawyers, talk to um, other people who you, if you have people around you who are wealthy, but make friends with wealth, it's important. And be comfortable with it. When, if you're uncomfortable with wealth, it won't stay. It'll leave you. It's an energy. It is definitely an energy. Hi. Hi. My question is, before you got the children, before your mother, your a brother was killed, mm -hmm. was there a consciousness within you that was already in action in the consciousness of which you're living now? In other words, had you paved the way mm -hmm. before any of this ever really happened? Because I think there are many times seeds have been planted for our, our future long before it comes into manifestation. So do you remember your consciousness when you were a child, when you were coming up, uh, how you felt about children, period, you know, uh, what you would ever do if something should happen to anybody in your family? And I know it's a big question, but I think I'm trying to find out what consciousness were you living in at that particular time when you got the children? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you what, what age were you? What age? Age. Um, I was in my, uh, let me see, uh, they, <laughs> they were three and four. I, I received those two first, and then a year and a half later, I got the other three. So, you, you're 18, 19 now. Okay. 
Old. About 35. About 35. Old enough. Well, old enough. Okay. Yeah, I love kids. I do. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I had an idea I was going to get them. Uh, and I know I've been on this planet many lifetimes. Okay. And I know who I am, and I have an idea of who I've been in many lifetimes. But I've also been their mom in many lifetimes. Did you see that the, the social worker was the, re the finances was the problem? The social worker felt like you weren't doing a good job. Was it, was it finances that, was, that the, the social worker felt like you weren't doing a good job? No, she didn't like the fact that I knew how to, okay. <laughs> she looked at how much money I was receiving. Right. And she thought, well, you're getting too much money. You're getting more money than I am. And I'm like, that's not my problem. Oh. That's your problem. Right, 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 right. And I'm like, these kids have an, you know, they have an issue. And I'm just receiving what I'm supposed to get for them. Okay. She didn't like that. Okay. And you, you really answered my question because what you answered for me is that you raised your consciousness to mm -hmm. a level, level higher than what her consciousness was, not to have a conflict with her. Yeah. And to keep yourself on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, to piggyback what Tommy had said, just kind of to <laughs> um, to piggyback what Tommy was saying, in a sense, how did you help the kids cope with the loss of a father? How did how did you help them cope with the loss of a father? How did I help you guys cope? Thank you. <laughs> I loved them as much as, as any person could. Um, I gave them the best that I could with what we had. When they would ask for things, I would, if I had it to give, I would do it. And if not, I would say, well, not yet, but give me a moment, we'll make it happen. And it would happen. Or strangely enough, someone would give us something, or it will just show up in our lives. I always uh, stayed in the positive to make sure that we would have the things that they would want. And we would sing and dance a lot. We love music. Um, and, I, and, I, and I love being, I like having fun keeps you young, you know? So, um. I'm gonna help her answer, her, answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> she never lied to them. That too. She always told them the truth. Yeah. Yeah, because lying is a bad vibration. It ages you, it makes you, it, it it, it, it gets in your soul and takes from you. I'm very clear on what you said about the 112. I'm very clear that you manifested that 112 by the visualization. My question is, how did you duplicate it? I understand you won the lottery twice. Is that correct? I didn't, I, I, did you win twice? Did I win twice? Mm -hmm. No, but I'm about to win again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Cynthia, you're smiling broadly, and why shouldn't you be? You are one of the richest women in America. Uh, and also the reason you might be smiling is that unlike so many lottery winners, you've managed to hang on to your cash. How have you achieved this double miracle? Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that, the power of prayer. Yes. Obviously, It's always good to have a good financial advisor too.
Yeah, well, we're going to come to, to more on, on how you managed to do this. Uh, let's go back to when you won, because it was 2007. You'd had a pretty tough few years before. You became a foster mother to five nieces and nephews when your brother was tragically, uh, tragically killed by a, dr a drunk driver, and you were really struggling. And then everything changed. You won $112 million in a California mega million lottery. That, that moment you knew you'd won, where were you and how did you hear? I was having lunch with the kids and um, I heard kind of secondhand through my dad. Uh, he had told me that I should probably check it because I didn't even check the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, decided after a few days, maybe I should. <laughs> and it was us. <laughs> <laughs> I love how happy you are. So many lottery winners end up miserable. You seem like one of the happiest people I've ever interviewed. I, I choose to be happy. It's, it's, it's definitely a choice. Now, for all those lottery uh, contestants out there, obviously this huge amount of money tonight, somebody may walk away with half a billion dollars nearly. What is the best advice you would give them? Obviously, you've done incredibly well to, to not squander the money. and You've done so much work for charity. You're one of the biggest philanthropists in America now. What is the advice you would give for people to win the lottery and stay happy? I would tell them to live their life uh, definitely, it, it would put them in a position to be charitable. That is a great thing to do because it also brings that same energy back to you. I'm a believer as you give, so shall you receive. So giving definitely helps. But also get some, a really good tax attorney and financial advisor. Mm. Someone that is reputable, that can help guide you along the way. Because it's going to change your tax bracket. It's going to change your life. And so you need to be prepared for those things, too. Well, listen, it's so good to speak to you and so nice to see somebody who's, who's so happy because you keep hearing these terrible stories about lottery winners whose lives end up miserable. Yours clearly has had the complete opposite effect. And Cynthia, uh, congratulations belatedly for the Thank win you. and for managing to do so well with it. It's a great inspiration to anyone tonight who may suddenly become a billionaire. That's my goal. <laughs> oh, one last question. <laughs> have, you, have you bought a ticket for tonight?